All right, uh, thank you indeed, OAMI, for that. And uh, here with us in the studio, I would like to first of all introduce Reverend Tom Topbatter. Uh, Reverend Topbatter is the acting senior pastor of First Baptist Church, Garuki, here in Abuja. It is a pleasure to have you join us, uh, Reverend. Good morning. Good morning, Nigerians. Merry Christmas to every one of you. All right. And also with us here in this studio is uh, Pastor Omotola Adebayo. Pastor Adebayo is the senior pastor of the Redeemed of Christ Champions Chapel here in Abuja. Glad to have you. And Merry Christmas. Thank you, Nigerians. Thank you very much. And also joining us from our Benin Network Center is Reverend Felix Omobidi. He is the General Overseer, New Confident Gospel Chapel. Church and former president Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria PFN. You're welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. Good morning, Nigerians. Merry Christmas to everybody. This evening and joining us, we are doing from Zaria is Most Reverend Buda Lamido, who is the Bishop of Usasa Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion Cooking. Welcome to Good Morning Nigeria and compliments of the season. Good morning, Nigerians, and good morning. Merry Christmas to everyone. Yeah, gentlemen of God, it's indeed a pleasure once again to welcome all of you to this very special edition of Good Morning Nigeria, uh, especially in the sense that uh, we are um, in a season, a season that means a lot to the, to the Christendom, and of course a season that we celebrate year after year. And you know when you talk about the birth of Christ, he's one man who changed the course of history. And of course, who brought life back again to mankind. But uh, as we celebrate this, just according to the report we just watched, he said, uh, let the meaning uh, not be overwhelmed by the festivities. So first of all, let us uh, introduce the meaning of Christmas. And uh, I'd like to begin with uh, Reverend Tom Tobatar. Yeah, Let's uh, understand the meaning of uh, uh, Christmas before we go into the, you know, such and other actualities that took place before and after uh, Christ. Man was lost and he couldn't save himself. And God decided to send this one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come and to be born as a baby. And Jesus came, left all his glory above, and stripped himself and was born as a baby. So, in Christmas, we're celebrating light. Like we're told in Isaiah chapter 9, uh, the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. This great light came in Jesus Christ. So, Christmas is a celebration of the coming of this light. Christmas is a celebration of the coming of the beginning of the reconciliation between God and man. The celebration of the love, the, the abundant love of God that he poured onto humanity. So, Christmas is just light. Life, it's love, it's peace, peace on earth, goodwill to men and joy. And so this is the celebration that we are having. And of course, every year we just celebrate the coming of Christ when he was born as a baby. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, let, let me bring in uh, Reverend Tom here. You know, Christmas celebrated all around the world by Christians and um, they believe that Jesus Christ has brought peace and um, he has brought light to the world. Most times, the message in itself gets lost in the meaning. Because Christmas, the way it was celebrated back when we were children, is no longer the way it is celebrated now. Why is that? Why is that? Thank you very much. Uh, the first Christmas was celebrated on the 337 BD. That's after AD, after the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The truth about it was that everybody was born to live, but Jesus was born to die. Does it really make sense that somebody should die? Man committed treasonable felony. God created the Garden of Eden, east of heaven, and uh, had a potter there where he consulted with Adam and Eve, the first uh, people created. But then, 
But then the devil knew very well that you can't get to the world except you have a body. So he took the body of a snake and entered and deceived Eve. And that was the beginning of the problem of mankind. And there was a need for a faithful God. A God filled with integrity to redeem mankind. It was man who committed error. And it was man who sinned. And there was a need for a person, a man, to pay the ultimate sacrifice. So Jesus Christ came to pay that sacrifice. We are all born to live, but he was born to die. And of course, he divided the calendar into two, before Christ and after Christ. On, in 1914, during the First War, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 said, Jesus is a prince of peace. And that peace was demonstrated in 1914 during the First World War, when Germany and British forces laid down their hands. No gentleman in a war front, but Jesus made the whole thing to be very gentle, because both of them agreed that this Christmas day, we are going to sing Christmas songs, we are going to embrace the peace that he brought. Of course, it took a lot of sacrifice for somebody to lay down his life for humanity. And it is this sacrifice that makes life great. Any life without sacrifice is meaningless. How I pray that we Nigerians and everybody in the old world will learn to sacrifice and our world will be better. Okay, thanks uh, indeed. Uh, Reverend Felix uh, Mobude, uh, the Overseer New Covenant Gospel Church and former President of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. The originals from our uh, Benin studio. You have uh, listened to our uh, first uh, two guests here in the studio who have made comments with respect to the meaning of uh, Christmas. And I want to get that from your own perspective, looking at the miraculous nature of uh, Jesus' birth. You know, what so Rounded his coming, how he came, the role of Angel Gabriel, and that of his mother, Mary, uh, and what have you. So, try and of course, uh, uh, let us understand more uh, into that uh, miraculous uh, uh, scenario uh, that uh, brought uh, Christ to this earth. Thank you. Uh, at the heart of God, Christmas story was a reconciliation. His love prepared him to send his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. There are many things we can learn from what happened. First, God God is a promise keeper. He promised several years back that the seed of the woman would bring redemption to man. He kept it. Second, I would like to look at the, the people around the story. Uh, Blessed Mary, who uh, was a virgin, uh, God did not choose in the house of kings and priests, but chose a young lady betrothed to a man espoused to be married, yet a virgin. Speaks of decency, speaks of, speaks of purity, purity, and that we can learn, especially our young people, can learn, can learn that a lady could grow to maturity, get the truth, and everybody knew that she was going to be the one. Joseph, Joseph was a virgin. And the second of the, 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 the third thing is that, is that uh, the fact that he was born, he was born in a manger. 
is a challenge is a challenge to our pride to our pride people people must say I was born in London, I was born in New York, I was born in Sizzle and so hospital. But can you imagine that the Savior of the world, of the world, the one who was with God, was with God, and was God, God, the one who made all the things and all the things were made for him, and through him, and through him. Into this world, into this world, in a manger, in a manger. Can you also imagine? Can you also imagine that when he came, when he came, the priest, the priest, who read the Bible every Sabbath, every Sabbath, but they didn't recognize God. Did not even speak to them. Speak to them. God went to the shepherds in the bush. In the bush. Such challenges, Such challenges that that we need to look at. Need to look at. It's, it's not everything. Not everything that is glamorous. Glamorous. But are we? But are we? God does not choose. The way man chooses. Man chooses. We will imbibe. We will imbibe. This message of this love, message of love, and this principle, this principle of of reconciliation, reconciliation, and value system to life, system to life. The world will be a better place. That's what I will say for now. I will say for now. Would be a better place. Let's bring in Mr. Reverend Buba Lamido, who is the Bishop of Rosasa Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. The message of Christmas and the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ still resonates around the world more than 2,000 years. Now, the message itself, what does it tell us? Can you please tell us how the message touches our soul and in most ways than one teach us how to live life in a humble manner? I'm not sure I got the last part of your question. How does it? Okay, let me go back. Let me go back to you. How does the message of Christmas touch lives? The message of Christmas, as we celebrate this year after year, is about the birth of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And this is celebrated every year. The reason for the coming of Jesus Christ is the fall of man from Adam. When God made man all what he could, when he made the charge of life and he failed, God sought the way. To redeem mankind in another world to concern the Holy God to save man. The main way is to send Jesus Christ as prophesied to have in Isaiah chapter 6, chapter 9 and 6, where it was prophesied of the death of Jesus. And Jesus was born. Of Virgin Mary and of an admin father, Joseph. The birth of Jesus Christ signifies to us what is Christmas. And this is the law of God that came to us, the day of faith, that man needs to be redeemed after the darkness of the world, the sinful world. And they are concerned to God Himself. It is also a message of hope. Hope in the sense that man needs to condemnation with my blood Himself. A man full of good, sinful nature, needs to be redeemed, to be saved, to be 
Reverend Boba Lamido, Bishop of Pools, as a Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. All right, let's return to the studio once more. I think one of the you know, points that he made uh, was on the issue of uh, timelessness of, 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 of the message. You know, you know, the message of Christmas is timeless, it doesn't change from year to year. And uh, we want him to wonder how does this message of hope that we are talking about, uh, the message of peace and joy, how do they exist uh, alongside the devastation across the globe? Conflicts everywhere. Uh, and meanwhile, all these conflicts exist where we also have Christians. Uh, what have you. So it does appear that the message, so they resonate, but then it has not been internalized by Christians across the globe. Uh, let me bring you in once more. <laughs> and tell the story once more. Okay, that, that's a tough one. Um, um, in the first place, even when Jesus was on earth, 
he was not accepted by everybody. We told in the gospel according to St. John that even his own brothers did not believe in him. And not of him. You, you know that um, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the religious leaders, and lots and lots of people did not accept his message. And after his death and resurrection, and the disciples continued the work, the same thing. All through the years, not everybody has accepted the love of Christ. Not everybody has accepted the, the peace that Christ brought and God does not force anyone and including those who claim to be his children who claim to be religious he, Christianity is a one-on-one -on -one relationship and for one who has experienced the love does not have a choice but to share the love now now, well, how, come how come everybody is not everybody is sharing the love? The question I will ask is, if you remove those who have experienced Christ, those who share the love, those who have been delivered from hatred, from bitterness, from sin, if you remove them from the world, I wonder how the world will be. I want to look at it like in a situation wherein there is no electricity and you have candles or you have generators definitely there will still be darkness even with electricity as you go around there is darkness and um, but then it does not prevent the light from shining and so for us as believers in christ we we'll just keep spreading the message spreading the love shining the light and trusting god that as many as possible will accept this love receive this love yes it's a love that you know touches the heart and, and, and let me bring in uh, pastor adebayo man fell from grace and was thrown out of eden but god being a compassionate god a merciful god said you are not going to suffer forever i'll bring a light into your life that will change everything for you an everlasting promise in itself and life indeed has changed for Christians. Now let's look at the humility of Christ himself. And as, it, as events unfold in our country today, leaders are not humble. Leaders don't listen to their, to their subjects. Christ was a listener. He could bring 5,000 people, talk to them, and feed them at the same time. That was miraculous. But... How does it reflect in our lives now, more than 2,000 years after? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as knowledge increased, people started emphasizing things that are meaningless. In the 70s and early 80s, when I was a student at the University of Lagos, I remember when I traveled down to Ibado from Lagos. The meat seller would put his meat, his bush meat, just by the roadside and put a coin there telling you this meat cost this amount. And the meat seller doesn't need to be there. You will pick it, you will pack your car, I'll pack my car, pick it, and then zoom off and put the money there but gradually people start celebrating things that have no value to humanity the essence of christianity or any religion is love the scripture made it very clear absolutely clear he said god is love and there is no darkness in him it is love that can make a lion and a goat to stay together without any harm but when that area of love has been tampered with men now celebrate the mundane thing materialism things that are meaningless over and above humanity and the love began to dwindle and that was the beginning in those days somebody who have two shirts can afford to give another person one but nowadays you discover that people just want to acquire an immense wealth for nothing they are not imparting lives and all that god wants for jesus to come to die it costs something it's a sacrifice if only people can go back to the old time christianity 
Christianity. Wherein humility is more emphasized than any other thing. Christ was slapped, they put uh, all manner of things on him. He was even born in Bethlehem. If you look at the history of Bethlehem, as pointed out by Micah chapter 5, verse 2, Bethlehem is just a small place in a village. If they were looking for where to a guest house, but they couldn't get any. The Bethlehem itself is at the extreme end of that village. And not only that, even the manger where Jesus was born was where they keep gold, sheep, and all manners. And yet, this is a man who made him part all throughout the world to he started life from humility. How girls pride and unnecessary emphasis on things that does not relate to love does not make life go forward. And anybody that must move forward in life must be humble. With humility, you can get a lot in life. With humility, we can scale great heights. With humility, lives can be changed. Because people mind what we do than what we say. And in a situation where you discuss, it's not only the leaders, even the followers themselves have problems. Even the followers themselves are not humble. If you put, if you put uh, um, 1,000 crabs in a place, and one crab is trying to go up, the history, the story, the philosophy is that the others will pull him down. This pull down seems then of arrogance, pride, pompous. I don't know where we learn it from. It's not from the only rich. It's a time we learn to be humble. The grass does not suffer anything because it's very humble. Whatever you do to the soil, the soil will take it. It's very humble. But you discover in our days we emphasize mundane things. A small young chap who just finished from university he wants to write jeep. Because pride has taken over. Ah, this I must do this, I must do this. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Life would be better if we emphasize sacrifice, humility and love. There, there are people that you discover that they eat and the, the remnant is enough to feed six people, but they will still throw it in the dustbin rather than find somebody to. There are people watching me now that you discover in their wardrobe they have dresses that they have not used for the past one year. Rather than look for somebody that can benefit from it, there are people who have box television that they have not even made use of for the past five years. They will still keep it there. There are people who can afford to sponsor. To sponsor uh, another person, a fatherless, to the to school, but they would just decide not to do it. And wherever there is a will, there is a way. I started sponsoring orphans from two. We are struggling with my wife to struggle, but now when God saw that there is a way, I am comfortable with ease sponsoring two hundred and six. Without making less, without bringing their name to a television station to use it to get money. Not at all. Because as long as God sees that humility, as long as God sees that law, without minding whether this one, one man fell down in area in there, and our nation that is full of greatness, I'm shocked that people are passing by and they left the man there. Even the people of the faith of that man also left him there. He was vomiting and uh, some blood was coming out. I picked the man, I put him inside my car, took him to a national hospital. It cost me less than 20,000. The man bounced back to life. But the man has been there for more than six hours. I, I don't know where you get this arrogance from. I don't know where you get this selfishness from. Me, 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 me. It's not moving us anywhere. Are we losing humanity here? Are we losing our humanity, our empathy? Yes. For other human beings? Yes, we are. Because as long as there is no sacrifice any longer, as long as people are not talking more about love, as long as uh, 
if I love Vombo, it, 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 it makes everything to, to be lost. Yeah, Pastor, oh, 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 I, I'm very glad that this is coming from you, as a man of God. But I, I recall vividly in the, in, the, in the early 70s, you know, when uh, Nigeria first experienced the Pentecostalism, if you like, you know, uh, during that time, uh, 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 Bessie Dahusa, you know, brought in. Uh, you know, one of the, uh, I think the Graham, or one of the top preachers in America, yes, yes, yes. you know, like came and they sensationalized Christianity in Nigeria, if you ask me. You know, because, uh, you know, we, we, we began to grow in terms of having different denominations and, and what have you. And then there are different patterns of preachings and all of that. Some are preaching salvation, some are preaching, preaching wealth, some are preaching miraculous richness and, and what have you. When you say that a child after high school, we expect him to buy a, a, an SUV. You know, well, we also believe that if he prays hard and there's something miraculous can happen, uh, perhaps maybe that's what he gets from where he worships or something. It's all part of it. So we are also going to review or look at uh, the role of the uh, men of God who interpret Jesus Christ to the entire populace. Uh, we, the, the, because uh, what you say in the pulpit matters, in the pulpit matters a lot to the congregation and they take it home. What my pastor said, my pastor said this, my pastor said that. Well, it's all part of, uh, you know, uh, Christianity, practice of Christianity in Nigeria. So I'm going to bring in once again uh, the Reverend Felix uh, 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 Mobide, uh, Jail of Asia of uh, New Covenant Gospel Church. And of course, he was once uh, 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 the president of uh, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. Now, considering the content of preaching in, in Nigeria, with respect to the nominations that we have in, in the country, are we lifting Christ? Are we lifting the virtues of Christ that uh, we have been talking about this morning? And if not, where did we get it wrong? Just as a motor uh, 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 as a short while ago. Well, uh, uh, we must open this, the basis of what we are celebrating. Uh, emphatically, it is love for humanity that made God to send his son. A gift, a gift given. Given and rejected, and rejected is painful to the giver. To the, giver. the Bible says he came to his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons and the daughters of God. Christ, Christ. Did not just come and set up a religion. It, it, it is beyond um, Catholic and um, Pentecostal and um, that. He brought life. He brought God into this world. And so man may have interpreted his messages and missions to the best knowledge that he has or for some other personal gains. But the truth of the gospel remains. God gave his son. And if you receive this gift, then you have salvation. And I listen to uh, Brother speaking. We, we don't deviate from this fact that God is the greatest giver. And he doesn't discriminate whether you are black or white, whether you are Muslim or Christian or whatever. He gave his gift to as many that were sitting. This is a central thing. And I will find that this is in the book giving gifts and others. It's synonymous because. God started it. The, 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 the wise men that the shepherd that came, they gave gifts. So, 
Simple around the Christmas. I believe we should walk with most emphasis at this time. Now, now it is obvious that society is dynamic. Politics is changing. The media is changing. So, uh, somehow it has affected religion, religion. So, so to say, so to say, especially the politicization of religion, of religion, uh, has not met the focal point of the call of God upon the men and women he has called. Uh, I'm not sure it has really helped the nation the way it ought to be. So we must not lay down on the fact that the message is still the same. Jesus has not changed. His purpose has not changed. Down on the line, the line of the of this moment, people who receive him are enlightened, changed, changed. Through Christianity, Christianity is not just joining the church or being religious in this, it's life. It's life. And this is what we must emphasize. Thank you. Thank you. For that, um, you know, comment, you, you really, you know, raise some pertinent questions. And uh, let's bring in Most Reverend Buba Lamidu to the conversation now. We're talking about Christianity and so many diversification to it, and um, from all indication around the world, religion is best practice with older people. The younger generation now think religion is all about preaching prosperity preaching how to get the worldly goods but Jesus led a Spartan life he had nothing practically nothing he wasn't married he didn't have a child he had nothing he lived a Spartan life places to sleep he didn't even own a house so how can the church in itself bring back the younger generation to the fold and tell them that you don't need to rush anything in due time what is due to you, God will definitely give it to you. Let me have your take on that. Let me have your take on that. The process of process, you can see that it is something that is scriptural. And uh, without faith, it is really impossible for any Christian to live out peace of her life. Now we will discover what is happening in our time and in our generation. We want to walk a way that the older people, people who are older Christians, Yeah. 
the Jesus. And when they profess it, they call it the preaching and call it me out that night. That is a kind of discouragement to the youth and the city and to where it is not worth and following this. Then you can see all across the world. For example, Christianity came to Nigeria as far back as 1841, 1842, and uh, we received Christianity all across, for example, in Nigeria and across the world and peace and love that can be spread throughout the country. But how has, how has the society received this Christianity? Is it as pure to us? By our church fathers, is it as lived out by them? When we look at the life of the modern day generation of our kind of Christian leaders, they themselves want to preach uh, the faith, they call upon people to live their lives as Christians, and yet they don't practice it. This is a discouragement. When you go to Europe, they that brought Christianity, they will discover that even there are you don't need maps in the fellowship of Jesus Christ. So we have so many people today that profess Jesus because Jesus has Lord and Savior, and yet they are distant from this Jesus Christ that has Savior and Lord. Because they are yet to surrender their lives to the Lordship of Jesus. When you say the Lordship of Jesus, it means that Jesus will get here and it will be concluded in charge of one's life. But I feel that we are not allowed Jesus to be in charge of our lives. And this young people see it. And they are not taking it after us. If Christianity continues in this way in Nigeria, but indeed in Africa, because it is said that the center of the gravity of Christianity is shifting to Africa, we will have large fellowship of human rights for Christians. And the, the point the content and the quality of Christian life will be nothing in the laws of coming them Christians. What Christmas calls us is a return to Jesus Christ, a kind of looking back, taking a stock of our life and taking our life, examining our life. Are we going to carry out this message of salvation? Are we working it out daily? Are we really in Christ? And this is what we attract the young people in our Christian church to continue in this way. And uh, what do we even teach? This young people in our churches is it just how to spell a group? Do we need to get scriptures? And uh, this is a question that we need to ask ourselves. Do we need to learn the Christian faith to prosper in Nigeria and in Africa and in the world? What are we teaching? 
we, we appreciate your contribution, uh, Reverend. You know, um, I, I, I'm so worried, you know, about uh, uh, what I'll call practical Christianity. Uh, are we really, you know, practicalizing Christianity as it should be? Because we're now at the point of discussing the messages of Christmas and how it resonates and how it impacts in our life and how it changes our life. It's not just to get a message uh, to say Christ was born in a manger and your miraculous birth and what have you. I am a Christian. And from even what the Reverend has said, there are many young people in so many churches across Nigeria. As a matter of fact, I mean, in, in many churches that have their youth, youth organizations and what have you. But are these things impacting positively? You know, if Martin Luther King Jr. of the Blessed Memory, you know, he said that we judge a man by the content of his character. Right. And if that makes sense, he, 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 then how does it now reflect in Christian practice in Nigeria. And uh, I, I want to bring you back in again on, on this because one of the points that uh, well, the last speaker made was that uh, when are we teaching these young people in churches? What is the message that is going out? Uh, is there a platform? Of course, we have a PFM, uh, you know, but is, 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 that, uh, uh, is there other platform through which Christianity, uh, Christianity practice in Nigeria is monitored or regulated, as the case may be. Because the preachings we get from different pulpits across Nigeria, you may you, you, you may not believe your ears what some you know, men of God do and say. And these things are reasons why the younger generation of Nigerians believe that look you can get things as easy as possible uh, but, but these same uh, pastors and the leaders of the of the of, 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 of christianity also are involved in politics they work on politicians who stole some money somewhere and they do the same in their church in terms of uh, thanksgiving and what have you and these politicians are are praised as a matter of fact sometimes they start the church for the church service to welcome a politician coming into the church because it's going to make donations and, and what have you and younger people are watching all of this and if a pastor is in the pulpit and he's telling you to do one thing and he does another, that's also another aspect of this. So how do we now begin to look at religion or Christianity and how we can change people, change society characteristically? Apart from the uh, PFN, we have other groups or gatherings of Christians. Number one, the um, umbrella body umbrella body that is covering Christianity in Nigeria is the Christian Association of Nigeria. And then you have other blocks, you have the um, those who belong to the PFN, CPFN, you have those who belong to the OAIC and on. Now, these bodies have the responsibility of encouraging each other, the responsibility of regulating and the responsibility of helping. And of course, we have different denominations and the denominations have their levels of leadership. Now, man is anywhere and everywhere. And man that is arrogant will be arrogant no matter the group he belongs to and you have people who are different who decide this is what i want to do in religion or in christianity we don't police people and arrest people for teaching this or not teaching that so talking about the regulatory bodies I mean, there's so much that anybody can do but then that being said is a message going out? I'll say yes. The message is going out. Just like I used the illustration of um, electricity for that time. One question I ask myself if we stop this message, if those who are living the Christian life stop living the Christian life, what do you think will become of our society? Now, is the message being imbibed enough? No. And why not? Of course, just like um, we heard this morning, a good number of preachers, a good number of leaders, they emphasize what ought not to be. They emphasize hope, 
various reasons, sometimes selfish reasons, and as a result, the message is not being passed across to people. The message of love, the message of humility, the message of reconciliation, the message of sacrifice is not being passed on. And so, what do we need to do is, is a big question. Number one, those who are doing right needs to keep doing right. And not just keep doing right, also encourage others. And encourage the right message, both through our preachings and through our actions, the way we live our lives should be led. And the right examples, and we don't give up and just keep moving and moving. And I believe that with the help of God, even no matter how little the light is, it will still shine and lives will still be impacted. Okay, thank you so much. Let's, let's talk about upcoming events and um, how the the, the, the the church itself will, 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 will influence, you know, how the decisions of the electorate. There was a census by the Roman Catholic Church, you know, by the Roman government during the birth of Jesus. That was why he was born in Nigeria because they wanted to go and be counted. And um, and um. Along the way, we are facing 2023 general elections. How will the church talk to its elect to its uh, followers in the church? How will the church encourage a peaceful elections? How will the church encourage the choices of the people? You know, regarding the governance of Nigeria, how will the church participate in running the government through giving advice to government? telling them that what you're doing is not right because to be sincere to be frank to ourselves the religious body across all religions in nigeria are not doing enough to you know to, to insist that government should be should be doing things differently you know talking about corruption and everything that is happening in nigeria today 2023 is a critical period in this country and i believe the body of christ should be part of it. What is your take? What is your take? Yes, thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Um, whatever has original has counterfeit. The problem now is when the counterfeit now are bold. The truth about life is that there is a need now to go to the drawing board to emphasize more on teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. And and no religion will say they don't experience counterfeits. We have original soldiers, we have fake, we have original lawyers, we have fake, we have even original doctor, we are fake. So everything that has original has counterfeit. And the major problem is with the counterfeit. Oh. The counterfeit, they can cannot uh, summon them. The PFN cannot summon them. Rather, we pray that they have the fear of God and the humility we ask. We, we are talking about. I was asked before I come to this program, um, what type to do? I just just some motola. And I say, this just a senior pastor. Don't say general overseer. You know, there is one member of our church that I so much love his humility. He was the Inspector General of Police. And he will sit down, he doesn't even sit at the, at where elders sit. No, he doesn't even sit where pastor sit. No, he sits down with the congregation. When he was the Inspector General of Police, that's humility. I love this man with passion because he exemplified. One day my car was behind. He didn't know it was my car. And his car was in front. I saw the man when the, uh, the traffic light points yellow. He informed his driver to stop. Red, he is, they stopped. Until when he become great. You see, when in the leadership of Christianity practice it with exemplary life, others will follow suit. 
comfort of spirit. Any religion that anybody is practicing without character is zero. Billy Graham said, if you lose house, you have not lost anything. If you lose money, you have not lost anything. But if you lose your health, you have lost something. But if you lose your character, you have lost everything. And it is this character that we must emphasize. A life without character, call it by any other name, is meaningless. The Lord Jesus Christ said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciple. If you do what I say, He didn't say if you say. Then we have many people talking. But they don't have a first class information. They don't have a first class knowledge of what they are saying. A parrot can speak my language. But the parrot cannot behave like a mortal adibar. Because it doesn't have the spirit to back it. The fact that people are talking does not mean that they know the, the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ they are talking about. Many people talk because of their selfish reasons. But if you see people who are really called by their fruit, you will know them. You understand? And the problem now is that we are now, we, number one, we are going to ask God to touch them so that they won't be a bad example. A bad leader with a bad example will send a bad message. If you hear people, I don't blame people when they group all the pastors together and say they are all the same thing. I don't blame them because they have made bad pastors. They are putting a signboard of a church in one place and uh, one man came there and said, no, pull it down. He said, no. The man sponsor, I'm a Muslim. The man sponsor my brother to the university. I'm not the only university. He paid. He said, put that thing there. put that thing there. I was not there. I was not there. But the man mentioned his brother and it was true. You understand? So if we live by example, people will, will know that the God we are talking about is real. But the truth is that it will shock you to know that some satanic priests do satanic things. Enter inside bush to go and collect power. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad this is, this is coming from you because mm. uh, it's coming from an insider who really understands uh, where the uh, uh, challenge really is. You are watching Good Morning Nigeria on NTA Network Service, and we are dealing with the, the meaning and the message of Christmas. Of course, we have uh, four uh, guests here with us, uh, Senior Pastor of the Redeemed of Christ Champions Chapel here, uh, with our Pastor Motora Adebayo. We also have uh, Evan Felix of Mobi there. Uh, of course, uh, the general of the of Nico Van Gospel Church, uh, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, former president. We also still have a uh, most Reverend Buba Lamido, Bishop of Usasa Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, all the way from Zaria. And uh, 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 of course, uh, uh, Reverend Tom Tobatoya. Well, we are still discussing Christmas, the meaning, and of course, uh, the message, and how it is resonating, and how these messages are impacting in the society. We're also reviewing how Christians in Nigeria are practicing that uh, religion. Are they well practiced? Are we abiding by the tenets of Christian religion? We're talking about Christ, the man whose birth, death, resurrection, and promised second coming from the bedrock of Christian faith. We take a short break now. When we return, the conversation will continue. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as the elections approach? Have you warned them? Not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within, and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Your agency. Your. Everywhere you go, from banks to hospitals to 
public offices, mass transit stations, airports, and even telecommunication centers, senior citizens are treated as nuisances. They are not. They are senior members of our society, and they deserve the utmost respect. We shouldn't be having our aged fathers and mothers standing in long queues to withdraw their monies at banks. Our retired senior citizens shouldn't be caught standing in buses for lack of seats or chasing after one just to get to their destination. Senior citizens shouldn't have to sit long hours in hospital corridors with no genetic specialist to attend to them. Our senior citizens deserve better treatment from all of us. They deserve to be listened to. They are deserving of seat reservations on public buses and priority attendance in public spaces. As young people, we are quick to say, no one owes you. This is not true. We owe the elderly members of our society a helping hand, our services, and respect. Age-friendly societies have more senior citizens enjoying good health, living safely, and engaging in meaningful community work than those who do not. Dignifying age-friendly services for senior citizens. The violence and criminal activities of indigenous people of Biafra and its armed the Eastern Security Network, presents the greatest threat in the Southeast Zone. However, kidnapping for ransom, armed banditry, familiar clashes have been some of the security threats that we devil the region. Accordingly, joint military operations are being conducted in the southeast to overcome the threats and to entrench peace and security. The military effort in collaboration with other security agencies are achieving the set objectives, which are the defeat of the threat a restoration of peace and security in the region. This message was brought to you from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. A new edition of TV is out. Featuring an unbreakable personality with purposeful leadership, Alhaji Mohammed with Lakoba. The Executive National President of World Transport and Commerce Association of Nigeria. Double on the as the local governments to be able to put all our structures in everywhere and be able to bring the regions members together to consign them to come and work for the progress of the association. This will be the final excitement as we also present an assemblage of professionals in the media space. Some company MTA programs, commerce trends in the fashion world, the city, sports, entertainment, and lots more. Get a copy of the very name or any MTA special nationwide. TV by your indispensable compatible. Well, we thank you for staying with us up to this moment on this uh, special edition of Good Morning Nigeria Committee on a Boxing Day. I hope that our composition uh, will not uh, make us to forget uh, the meaning of today again. <laughs> <laughs> because no matter on Boxing Day, have you uh, said hello to your neighbor yeah. with some box uh, full of uh, items? You didn't give me my you know, I mean, it's, uh, that's what today is all about when you say Boxing Day in yes. Christmas uh, celebration. Yes. Reach out to the needy, yeah. reach out to those to your neighbors. To your neighbors. Yeah. Well, Abuja is a place where you don't even see your neighbor for three months. <laughs> yeah. so open the door, close the door, and well, now we have to leave. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How can Christianity promote cohabitation or coexistence in this country? We are a pluralized nation, no doubt about that. Uh, we have uh, two major religions in this country Christianity and, of course, I Islam. And uh, what amazes me most of the time is that when I see co collaboration, partnership between um, citizens of these two different religions in the marketplaces, in the own shops, you know, they still are neighbors. In but let me tell you something that, that, that you need to know. In mm. Islam, mm. as a Muslim, mm. I am not a Muslim until I believe in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. 
That's the point. And yes. I, and, and I recall also that uh, during the time. I, I believe that Jesus will come for judgment. Mm -hmm. That is in the Quran. It will come down. He will pass judgment. Look, look, religion in itself. Religion in itself. Just didn't happen. Just didn't There's a purpose for yes, it. Yes, it's a process yeah. by God. It's created by God. And I recall that in the days of uh, Pope John Paul II, you mm -hmm. know, he was attending or he was going to mosques. Yes. You know, yes. He visited the nation that's a Muslim today. He goes to, he goes to mosques, mosques to worship there. You have tell so that uh, there's no more difference about all of this. I mean, it's about uh, the way you look at it. Yeah, the, it's a mindset. And so how do we now live together with them? Because Christ also promoted cohabitation, uh, unity of, uh, you know, among nations and i like to bring in a uh uh guest most reverend probably i bishop of usasa can you come in here how can we because you live in zaria and of course zaria has a is a historical you know you know community and of course you've been there for for a while how do we live together with our neighbors who are non christians Communication or coexistence between Christians and other religions. Um, we are in the same with Islamic faith. Uh, these are the two major ones governing in, in Nigeria. The, the, the other thing to do to coexist and to have peaceful coexistence is not. Discovery is 
say, well, I want to sacrifice my life as Christian. I want to coexist with others. But why are other faiths not doing so? I think that's an opinion. Yeah. But Christianity teaches us for the grammar. And if you look at uh, the ministry of Jesus, it's all about friendship with the divinity and a friendship mission. So, true friendship will invite people and attract them to our faith and coexist together. And the church should be more in this regard, especially in festivities like Christmas. Mm. Yes, uh, most of them, Buba Lamido, yes, friendship and um, trust and, um, you know, showing the way. Don't teach me. Show me your religion. That is how it's supposed to be. Let's bring in um, the... The, the overseer, Reverend Felix Emobody in, in Benin is the general overseer, New Covenant Gospel Church, you know. Show me your ways so that I can understand it. So, how can this reflect in this season of love, peace, and humility? Well, the message of the angel announcing the birth of Christ is explicit that it is peace and goodwill to all men irrespective of their religion or tribe or whatever. True Christianity must relate, accommodate to Christianity, must copy Jesus. Jesus was accused that he is with sinners. He moved among the poor and the rich. He reached out to people. So, how can you say you love God who you have not seen? When you don't love your neighbor, who is by your side, now Jesus gave a parable of a certain man who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, and on the way, armed robbers, I caused him. Evil has been through the ages. So to say that because they are evil now, we may not see the church is doing enough. I don't think that is true. Evil has been. So, so Jesus said. Three categories of people pass this man who was beaten by robbers. And a common person, not even a, a title holder in the church, helped him. So when he taught a lesson of good neighborhood, neighborliness, and we must not forget that in sharing the message of Christ. Jesus had no, no reason to come down here if he doesn't have respect for us. So we must demonstrate it. And if we narrow Christianity to individuals such as preachers, pastors, pastors did this, this one, did that, we have failed. Christianity is beyond a certain pastor or a certain prophet is dealing with the politician who confesses Christ, must demonstrate it in his office. The policeman who confesses Christ must demonstrate his love for Christ and humanity on his point of duty. So we, we must have a broader look at this. If you love Christ, you can steal the nation's patrimony and the 
come over to the people and get them impoverished and get them set. That's not the life of Christ. We must have a brother look at who Jesus is, what he came to do. And every one of us begin to practice that life. That is the challenge that we have. Jesus has to have disciples. If you pass to a door, and one of them was a thief, what guarantee does any pastor have today that all the people you have in church are going to be pure? So we must understand the dynamism of our world. You know what was going on? The only television station was in the West. Now, today, it's all over. Now, all the states, including the other television stations, which is good. But you go out there in the street and ask, who is the minister of information? Ask 10 people. You will be shocked. You will be shocked. At the result, you will get. They don't know. People choose to be ignorant. Not because that the news is not out there. So we must all emphasize our core values. Values in life. In life. Now, I have had Muslim people. Is that like him, Mister? Is that like the person here? I mean, I don't have to go into that. Yes, you know the person here, Reverend Felix Omovi. You made a very, very pertinent point there, and and I'll take it over uh, from you. Uh, in thinking of uh, our character, our ways, our our, our values, our, our norms, and what have you. I recall those days when my father was a, a cat fist. Uh, before the uh, usual uh, Thanksgiving, what do you call it? Uh, before the usual, uh, uh, no, no, not necessarily have this. Uh, the normal uh, Sunday. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, no, not necessarily someone you have to uh, make your contributions. You know, yes, yes. you know, we call it a normal uh, Sunday, Sunday yes. thing. You, know, you have to uh, go up and shake God, whatever you have. Then, yeah, before that happens, then I remember as a child, my father will announce that look, if you know that you have a matter to settle with your friend or neighbor or whoever, your brother, and that matter has not been settled, don't give God any offering because God is not going to take it. And it is biblical that. You have to settle those and the matters that you have before you, you, you offer to God. But these days, I've never had that again in the past 40 years in any, in any church of God. And that's just what we got. I got in this because of the character that uh, Abu Dhabi was talking about, that Bob Sister like he was talking about. Right. And because it's also a, a, a kind of pleasing pattern to say, look, if you have an issue with somebody, somebody please don't give God money. God won't take that. Right. Until you go and settle the matter and, and all that. So that's just by the way. But for you, uh, so to conclude this conversation, um, what do you think about the prophecies we get these days? Are they Jesus like? Okay, we have prophecies, political prophecies, the religious prophecies, all manner of prophecy, football prophecy, football prophecy. <laughs> okay, is that Christ like? In 20 seconds, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, like in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, he had one Judas. The original pastors are by far more than the fake. So we must pay rapt attention to those who have the time to search the scripture. He says, search the scriptures because in it you have eternal life. The prophecies, they, sometimes I wonder how the people have time to talk about football, to talk about all this and that and that and that. The, the truth about it is that anything that Jesus never emphasized is minor. At the university, they say there is a subject that is major, there is a subject that is minor. Why do you have 100% in minor and fail? Just because you don't concentrate. We should consolidate our draconian grip on the scriptures. And now that we know, like in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have 12 disciples and we have one Judas. It's also the same today. We must now do everything 
to try and influence the judices. Indeed, your 20 seconds is up. <laughs> the senior pastor of the Redeemed Church of Christ Champions Chapel in Abuja, Pastor Omotela Adebayo. Thank you so much for your insightful contribution. Thank you very much. Reverend Tom Pakpote Ragari Wright. Yes. Okay, he's the acting senior pastor, First Baptist Church, Gadiki Abuja. Thank you so much Thank for coming Thank on Good Morning Nigeria. Yes. And from our Benin Network Center, we have Reverend Felix Omobidi, the general overseer, New Convenient Gospel Church and former president, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN. Thank you so much for your contribution on the program. And joining us via Zoom from Zaria is Most Reverend Buba Lamido. He's the Bishop of Osasa Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Spot update is next. Super Eagles defender Olaino is not expected to step on the pitch again until late January 2023. The Nigerian international has been missing in action since sustaining an injury in Torino's away win against Unimis in October. Olaino was on target in the game. His first goal of the campaign. The left back will be available for selection against Verona on January 28th. Olaino will miss the games against Verona, Salamitana, AC Milan, Spiza and Florentina. His future at the club remains uncertain with his contract due to expire at the end of the season. He has made 10 league appearances for the Turin club this season. Meanwhile, the last we saw of the Premier League was on Sunday 13 November, with Manchester United snatching an injury time win against Fulham. Six weeks have passed, during which have been glued to events in Qatar, where Wales fell at the group stage and England suffered penalty rule again, before Argentina lifted the 2022 World Cup. Today, the English top flight returns. Arsenal are out in front after a first 14 games of the campaign. They have amassed at 7 points, dropping them in just 2 fixtures so far. Their only defeat coming at Manchester United in early September. All 7 teams to win 12 of their 14 games have won the Premier League title. Another good omen for the Gunners is the team that topped the table on Christmas Day, having champions in 10 of their past 13 seasons. In their first game back, they face West Ham at Emirates Stadium later today. Well, we have come to the end of the show today and I'd like to thank you for being part of it. This is a boxing day and we're still uh, the Christmas season. So, once again, Merry Christmas and a happy boxing day. And my name is Kieran Umaya. I'll see you again tomorrow. And 